All righty, guys. So we had a red day in the stock market today. Well, actually, the Nasdaq went green. It went up 0.1%. But other than that, we had the S&P down 0.1%. The Dow went down 0.6%. Not the best day for the Dow as the Russell went down about 0.3%. So in this video, you guys know the deal. We're going to break down a bunch of stocks, charts, what I'm doing in the markets, and we're going to talk about some earnings. We got a bunch of earnings here after the bell. So sit back, relax, hit that like button, subscribe, get your 15 stocks from Moomoo and your 12 stocks from Weeble and feel free to check out my Patreon. All of those are linked down below. And now, guys, let's dive right into the video. So, like I said, we had a red day pretty much all across the board except for the NASDAQ, which, I mean, it wasn't the best day for the NASDAQ. It only went up 0.1%. So, uh, you know, barely a green day, right? As the VIX, believe it or not, well, it's not that hard to believe considering it's been going down and went down another 3.6%. The VIX is now officially in the teens. If I pull this chart up, you guys will see the VIX is at 1984 as I'm making this video. And it just took the lows out from, I believe, about a week ago. Yeah, about a week prior to me filming this video. So VIX is getting to levels that... It's raising alarm bells for me. I'm not going to lie, you know, because we, we've seen how the VIX has performed over the past year, year and a half. Each time it's come down to this teen level, teen range, whether it be 16, 17, 18, 19, whatever, it has obviously seen a spike based on what we're seeing on this chart right here. And let me actually make my face a little bit smaller so you guys can see it, right? I mean, you guys see this clear as day. The VIX, as it's gotten down to these levels, it's seen spikes. Now, we don't know when it's going to spike. Who knows? I mean, that's the million-dollar question, uh, but let's just say we can anticipate it. That's what I'm saying. So keep your eyes on the VIX, and if you guys saw the medals today, which I covered, I believe, in my last video very briefly, uh, they crushed it. Silver went up a lot today. Gold went up a lot, and you guys can see uh, the, the, these are finally, the medals are finally starting to reverse. We have silver breaking out of highs from last week and now it's at a, or not not even last week, uh, a couple weeks ago. And now it's at a multi-month high. We have gold starting to break out. You can see here it took out 1790, also 1800, which those two levels uh, were big for gold. So now it looks like it's about to test. Looks like it's going to 1820, 1825, which was that high from the middle of August. That's where I think um, this is going next. So metals are looking very strong, in my opinion. And if we pull up SPY and break down quickly what's going on here before we dive into the earnings, guys, and, and let me tell you, you're going to want to stick on throughout this video. SPY right now is fighting with 410. 4.15, right? It closed at about 4.07 today. And you can see here, 4.10, 4.15, that was the level of resistance, like I've said before, from the middle of September, right before we got the August CPI data, which obviously tanked the stock market. So that's going to be a sticking point in the short term. Uh, you know, hence why my alert's at 4.10. I might as well put another alert at 415 bucks. We'll see what it does from that point. So two alerts set on SPY and on Triple Q. Let me pull that up and check this out. Um, this is at currently 293, which 295 is a big resistance on this. 296, that's a big spot. So we need to get out of there. If the bulls get out of there, which was the high from the middle of November, we have a wide open gap towards 308, 310, 312, 15, roughly. Who, who knows where it's going to go, obviously. Uh, but that is where it could go, potentially, right? That, that'd be uh, the right shoulder completing here in the inverse head and shoulders that we do have drawn out on this four hour chart. So that's a quick little technical breakdown on what's going on here. Kind of some key levels that I'm looking at. And for crude oil, let's see how that did today. Uh, crude oil went up or down. Come on. Why is this not popping up here? Let's see. <laughs> it's at 81 a barrel. So I think it actually might have had an update today. Um, let me see. I forget to be honest, guys. It looks like it was at 83 a barrel. Yeah, it was at 83 a barrel at 10 15 a.m. on the East Coast, which. That's a, that was a big move from 79 a barrel at 1.40 a.m. On, on the East Coast. So essentially in nine hours, oil went up 4%. Now it's pulled back from 83.30 a barrel to about 81 a barrel as I'm filming, which which means it's pulled back about 2.7%, um, which isn't that big. It's still holding, it looks like, a decent amount of the gains from earlier um, today. And on the four-hour chart, guys, do not get excited because, like I've been saying, oil is still and a downtrend. That's clear as day. You guys see that, right? So in the meantime, let's see what happens on oil at about, I, I, honestly, I'm looking very closely here at 80, 85 a barrel for the bulls. You know, if they fail here, which it looks like they already are failing, 
Watch out for a dump back under 80 a barrel. That's where we're probably going. Um, so what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments as always. And let me see what we have um, on the list for today. Again, we had a lot of earnings, but now i got to pull up the list right here. So this morning, I'm not sure if you guys caught it, but we had Dollar General report as well as Kroger. So let's pull those two up. Again, we had Dollar General and we had um, Kroger. So DG is Dollar General. Let's pull that up. This stock ended up not doing so well. It went down 7.5% on the day. And you guys can see we are starting to get some buying pressure right at 230, 235, which is a good sign for the bulls, uh, considering you know that that's been support since the end of July. But the second this thing breaks under 230, if it does do that, who knows? Uh, if it does, there's going to be a big drop from there, probably. I mean, you know, that'd be a huge break of trend. And from there, guys, um, who knows where it's going to go? You know, 225, 220, I have no idea. But DG, all I know is 230, 235, that is a big technical point here for the Bulls. So let's pull up the live news tab and see exactly what they did. They ended up doing $2.33 in EPS, which missed the 253 estimate. So they missed EPS, and they slightly beat on revenue, $9.5 billion versus $9.42 billion estimated. And if we look here at their Q4 EPS guidance, which is another bad point, they see Q4 EPS of $315 and $330, versus the $3.66 estimate. So that's under for the um you know for, for for Q4 EPS guidance which is not good and they see Q4 same store sales up 6 to 7%. I'm not sure what the uh guide or uh, the estimate was on that but 6 to 7%, that's not too bad. Uh looks like here Q3 same store sales were up 6.8%. The estimate was up uh for them to be up 6.1%, so they beat that. So it's kind of like a mixed bag earnings here. And really the reason why the stock's falling in my opinion is because of the EPS miss and the weak EPS uh, guidance. But other than that, I mean, these earnings were not horrible, uh, but you know, the, the earnings, uh, the EPS not looking that great. And that's the reason why um, the stock's falling. And we'll see what it does at 230, 235. Again, guys, that is a very big point here for the bull. So the next stock is Kroger, which also reported earnings in the morning. And this stock ended up going down about 1.5%. We did spike up earlier. I'm not sure if you guys saw it, but this morning Kroger was at almost 50, uh, 52 bucks a share in the pre-market. Uh, and then the market's open and this thing gave back all the gains and some. I mean, at one point it was at 47 bucks. Uh, so it dropped 8% from that pre-market high. And then it pretty much consolidated for the rest of the day. Closed at about 48, 48, 50, uh, which honestly is not that bad of a close for Kroger. And honestly, if we pull up, I'm saying honestly a lot. <laughs> if we pull up the four hour chart, let's take a look here, guys. If it wants to load, come on, come on, come on. There we go. We ran up again in the pre-market, like I said, and now we've pulled back and we're still holding the moving averages, which is good. That's a pretty good sign on the four-hour chart, even though if we're looking, we're still clearly in a downtrend based on, again, we're above the moving averages, but in a downtrend based on you know what I'm seeing in the grand scheme of things. And for this to really start to reverse, for Kroger to really start to break out, it's going to need the breakout of 53 and 55 bucks, which those are my two alerts as of right now. So let's see what they ended up doing. They ended up doing 88 cents versus 82 cents in EPS on sales of 34.2 billion versus 33.95 billion. So they beat EPS, beat on revenue. Q3 same store sales were up 6.9% as the estimate was for them to be up 4%. That's a nice beat. And they now see full year same store sales up 5.1 to 5.3%. Not too bad. Uh, but again, guys, the technical picture needs to change for me uh, to even consider this. And for that to happen, it's, it's got to break 53 to 55 bucks uh, for it to really start reversing trends. So now let's see some of these other earnings, which we had charge point after the bell. Uh, we had a couple other ones, Ulta, Marvell. So stick on throughout, guys. We have some more stocks to talk about. So charge point ended up closing down roughly 2% on the day. And after the bell, if we pull up the intraday, it is actually down even more. It actually went down initially to about 1130 after the bell. That was a drop of 8%. Now it's consolidating consolidating at about 1190, which means it is down about 2.5% after the bell, which really isn't that bad. Uh, so let's see exactly what they ended up doing. Live news tabs, da -da -da -da. they ended up doing 
let's see here, negative 25 cents in earnings per share, so they're losing money, versus the negative 19 cent estimate. So they missed on EPS, and they ended up missing on sales, 125.34 million versus 132.12 million estimated. So double miss for a charge point, that's never good. And they see Q423 revenue of 160 to 170 million versus the 160.91 million. That's not bad, uh, pretty much right in line. Actually, the, you know, the upper end of that range is above the estimate, which is good. And anything else, let's see. On an adjusted basis, though, uh, they did beat EPS. They came in at negative 16 cents versus negative 19 cents. But, I mean, ah, whatever. You know, they still missed on an unadjusted basis, and they missed on revenue. So that's not good. And, of course, this is kind of, I don't want to say it's a political play completely, but with, you know, everything going on, which we're not going to get into in this video, uh, with with ener new energy, clean energy, well, I don't know. You know, it's it's one of those that could go either way depending on who's in office, and that's a big reason as to why I'm personally staying away from this right now. Um, you know, we'll see how it goes. If you're in it, I hope it works out for you. But for me, guys, you know, I've traded ChargePoint a bunch over the past couple of years, made some good money on it, but as a long-term investment. I'm just not there yet with it. I'm just not there yet, and the earnings are not looking that great. And we'll see. You know, who knows? Maybe in 10 years, this company will be the biggest company out there, you know, the biggest leader in the space. But for me, you know, I'm staying away from this as a long-term play again. As a short-term trade, we'll see. You know, my alert's at 14 bucks. We'll see what it does from that point. So another one I want to go over here, we have a couple more to talk about, guys, is Ulta. Let's pull Ulta up, which if you guys caught my – stealth bull market video where I talked about a couple stocks in, the, in, in a stealth bull market. This was one of them. And Ulta at this point looks like it just hit a fresh, is that an all-time high, guys? You bet your, you know what it is. <laughs> it looks like it hit an all-time high here after the bell, which is insane. It looks like we hit 490 bucks. We closed at 472. So this thing ran up another 18 bucks after the bell. Now it's pretty much holding flat, holding steady at 474. So initially it ran up 4%. And let's see what they ended up doing, which is, I mean, this is crazy. The fact that it's running to all time highs. It just goes to show the strength of this company, this stock. It is unbelievable. So Q3 EPS came in at 534, which beat the 415 estimate. I mean, come on, guys. Ulta's crushing it. Look at that. Sales, 2.34 billion versus 2.21 billion estimated. So they beat EPS by a long shot, by a mile. They beat sales, which is great. And they see full year 22 sales of about 9.95 to $10 billion. And let's see, anything else? Uh, they raised their full year 22 sales guidance, which is also great. Uh, I just mentioned that, right? Yeah. And they raised their EPS guidance as well for, I believe, full year 22. So Ulta is crushing it on all cylinders, guys. And we're not going to do a deep dive into the stock in this video, but this one might be worth doing a deep dive on. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, you know, I'm not going to chase it now as a long term investment. Uh, you know, just because it's in a stealth bull market, meaning it's in a bull market as overall the stock market's in a bear market, uh, just because we're seeing that doesn't mean we have to go uh, blindly invest into it. Where did you come from, bees? What's up? Yeah, my, my dog just came out of nowhere. What's up, buddy? You want to come say hi? Hold on, guys. Let, let, let me bring her up here so she can say hi. Hold on. She just ran in here out of nowhere. I, I didn't realize she was upstairs, but this is my dog, guys. You've probably seen her before. You want to say hi? I don't want to take too much time, all right? You don't want to say hi? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, she just ran up here out of nowhere. She was downstairs. How, what, are, you, are you sneaking up on me? <laughs> uh, either way, guys, wh where was I? Um, with Ulta, yeah, this is one that I wouldn't rush into because it's already at all-time highs. I mean, this one would have been great to buy uh, months and months ago. And to be honest, if I was in it, I'd be locking in profits at this point. Uh, but either way, we're, we're going to watch it. We're covering it. And as a, again, long-term investment, I'm not chasing it. But here as a trade, if it pulls back a bit right by these moving averages, hey, we could be, end, you know, ending up 
uh, buying this on the dip. Potentially. I'm looking at doing that potentially. That doesn't mean you guys have to go do that. So that's Ulta. Very strong, very strong uh, earnings from Ulta. I'm very impressed with that. Uh, let's see what Marvell ended up doing. Ticker symbol MRVL. Marvell went down 2.4% on the day. Now, after the bell, it looks like it is down an additional $3, which equates to about 6%. So Marvell is getting hit after the bell, which is honestly not a surprise. A lot of these types of businesses have been destroyed lately. Um, Q3 EPS came in at 57 cents, which missed the 59 cent estimate on sales of 1.54 billion, which missed the 1.56 billion estimate. So they ended up double missing, which is not the best sign. Uh, and let me see here about guidance. They see Q4 EPS of 41 at 51 cents versus 62 cents. Ah, oh, that's awful on sales of 1.4 billion plus or minus 5% versus the 1.61 billion estimated so yeah marvell dropping the ball 100 percent here on these earnings and the stock is not only not only did it go down two percent two and a half percent on the day but the stock is paying for it here after the bell 100 percent paying for it as it again it's down over six seven percent after the bell so on the four hour chart marvell is hanging on by a thread above this 180 sma which honestly it's right around 40 bucks I feel like that point could break. You know, I feel like we might give at that point and, you know, start getting a bunch of selling pressure. We shall, we shall see. I mean, who knows? We shall see how these next couple days of, uh, of trading go. So let's do a recap on AMC. I'm not sure if you guys caught it, but AMC had a great day. We covered that in my last video. Then we'll talk about NVIDIA. Then we're going to wrap up the video. So AMC went up 13% and the high on the day, I believe, was well over 9 bucks. Let me see here. Uh, come on, come on, come on. There we go. $9.15. So it had that initial run up to $9. It pulled back. Then if you guys recall, that's where I made my video about AMC earlier today, right when it was at $8, $8.20. And then it ran up all the way another dollar from the point I made that video, another 11, 12%. And from that point, we took the highs out from previously, which is good for the bulls. Very good sign heading into tomorrow. From that point, we pulled back again. And we pretty much, if you guys take a look, uh, held trend, which is good. This looks like the Bulls are holding decent right now, holding pretty strong in the short term. So tomorrow, maybe next week, I'd be looking for another move on AMC. You know, it's 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 even up after the bell here. It's up nine cents. I mean, it's not a lot for AMC, but still, it's up nine cents. That's not that bad considering it is an eight dollar stock. So it is moving up a little bit, and. You know, we'll see if this continues into tomorrow. Overall, there's no doubt about it. That volume came in today. We saw a bit of a short squeeze. Is there more around the corner? That's the million-dollar question. So AMC up 13% on the day. What did GameStop do? Do we get any run on that? Yeah, nothing really. Uh, went up 2%. Either way, though, I'm watching it heading into tomorrow and next week, guys. You got to watch GameStop always, especially when we're seeing some upside in AMC. Those two are, you know, they're attached to the hip, right? So the last stock I wanted to go over was NVIDIA. And by the way, guys, if you're still here, I appreciate you all as always. You guys are awesome. Let me know in the comments. Say stuck till the end or still here or drop some random emoji. I appreciate you guys. And if you haven't subscribed to my second channel yet called Stocks Talks Money, use that link down below if you guys want to see different kind of content. It's still finance oriented, but not so much stock market oriented. It's more personal finance, general finance. You know, that's what we're covering on the Stocks Talks Money channel. So if you guys want to check it out, Linked right down below, or just go to the YouTube search bar, type in Stas Talks Money, and you're going to get some different kind of content for me, still finance related, and I promise you guys, you're going to find value in it, because, come on, don't all my videos have value? I'm not trying to be like, like I'm the best YouTuber, but I put a lot of time into this, guys. Go subscribe, I guarantee you, you're going to find some value. So, NVIDIA is one that I'm looking at today, because it had a 1.2% Green day in the midst of a red day, right? Very strong day for NVIDIA. And AMD is another one we'll talk about in a second maybe. Uh, as another bonus one that just popped in my head. This is one that whether it's tomorrow or next week, I have no idea, I think a big leg up could be coming in the short term here, right? We have an ascending triangle. We close right under 171, 172. We're right there. We're right there for, for the next leg up in my opinion. So, and mind you guys, this is something that, 
long term, I would love to own NVIDIA, but the price has ran away from me at this point, to be honest, and I'm not going to rush it at this valuation. But as a short-term trade, I'm loving it. Past 172, maybe towards 180, 85, 90. Watch out for NVIDIA. AMD is another one, which, again, we've covered on the channel many, many times recently. It is right at a big point of uh, you know resistance, right at 78, 79, 80 bucks, right? If that point breaks, we might fill the gap to 80, 85, or, well, 80 uh, for sure, maybe not for sure 80, uh, but 85, right? 90, 95, that could be around the corner. So these are a couple of stocks, guys, that I'm watching right now. I don't want to keep you all too long. So uh, I guess with that being said, that's it. If you guys enjoy the video, hit that like button, subscribe, get your free stocks from Moomoo, Moo, from Weeble. All those are linked down below. And if you want to check out my Patreon, if you want, you know, more access to me throughout the day, call outs, alerts, morning videos, all that good stuff is on Patreon, link down below, or you can go to StockStarFest.com slash Patreon. And with that being said, uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget, Stock Stocks Money. Make sure to subscribe. I'll see you there. Cheers. Peace out.